This video is the first of a series on the design, build, and use of a wooden sailing dory. In this introduction, I take the boat on a shakedown cruise, launching at Willow Beach on the Colorado River. I wake up from my bed in the aft cockpit and discuss what worked and what didn't work with this boat that had several near catastrophes in the build. Videos detailing the build will be released weekly and then remain on my channel. The challenges I faced in completing this boat will likely scare anybody away from attempting one on their own, but the design is free and included in the videos for anybody interested. I'm sitting at anchor where I slept last night. The fish were jumping this morning a little bit. So I, uh, I didn't even pack up my bed. I just rode out and made some casts to try to catch them, but nothing bit. Now there's too much sun. It's too late in the day now to catch anything, so. I rode back and kind of finishing up my breakfast. Um, current kind of, current's just about done. Real slow out there, but it's gonna be nothing like what it was last night. And I think I'll be fine just kind of rowing out in the middle. And I'm gonna row up to, I think I'm gonna try to row up to this spot called Emerald Cove where it's uh, just kind of like an iconic spot on uh, this little stretch, real pretty, and then get into the Narrows. But I'm worried I might get myself in trouble because if that wind comes in from the south, I'm going to have to fight that wind in the, the canyon, try to sail out of here, which will be interesting in this narrow little boat. I got cold last night. I was a little bit worried about capsizing. If I was, if I was smart, I would have taken my blue, my blue uh, buoyancy tanks, and I could have just tied a buoyancy tank on each side and ran a line underneath to really secure it and that would have made me super stable. That's one of the fun things about building and sailing little boats like this is you're always kind of tinkering and problem solving. So let's to talk about my boat. Um, <clears throat> this is the sixth little wooden boat I made and each one you're kind of like thinking I, I love just kind of tinkering and thinking like, okay, like, what do I need one to do? What can I make one to do? How can I, and this is why I designed my own little boats is because I'm, I'm like, I want it to do, because you can make it do exactly what you want it to do. You can, you can tailor it exactly to your maybe weird specific needs. And so I wanted a boat that I could put on top of my car that would take me and my wife and some camping gear and that I could row. Um, I got a bunch of little sailboats that I that I love. Um, and me and my wife have a blast on them. Me, my wife, the dog. And... But I didn't have a boat that... <laughs> As I was finishing up that last one, and I was actually like filming some videos like where I needed to row because the wind stopped, I realized I'm like, I don't have a boat that me and my wife can get in and row when there's no wind. And there were days and there's no wind and we wanted to get out on the water and it's just beautiful but especially in like the cool weather out here uh so car toppable carry two people in camping gear rowboat maybe sail a little bit 
So I looked at like Dory's and like the like legend of the like uh, the stories about like Dory's and how they're supposed to be so seaworthy and uh, the history of them. It's appealed to me. And so I said, well, you know, that Stern isn't doing a whole lot. That, and then the bow, I mean, you only need half the bow. I could chop both of those off. And basically what I did is I took a, a Grand Bang story and I chopped the bow vertical. Uh, instead of doing that tombstone transom, I just made a vertical transom right at where the, the two planks come together. And then the bow, six eight inches, six inches, uh, six inches up the water line. Maybe it's five, it's five inches up off the, a 700 pound water line. I put a transom that's, uh, raked a little bit forward at the bow. And so I was able to get two planks, two sheets of, uh, eight by four inch plywood to make the, the planks on the side. And it's basically the dimensions of like an 18 foot dory. 18 foot Grand Bing story. Um, two sheets of quarter inch ply for the planks, uh, two sheets of three eighths inch ply for the sole and all the parts. And um, I kind of made some stupid choices building it that I'll talk about. Uh, but I'm real happy with it. It like the the like the way it rose and I'll get into performance in a second. So. Oh, and I, and I put a little sail on it. It's 57 square foot sprit sole, which uh, is not a lot of canvas. And I wanted to do a sprit sail because it like fits that like I that dory imagery. Um, and also like it, I've never sailed with one, and now it makes sense how you can braille it real quick and get it out of the way, and you can just keep it wrapped up on the mast and drop it in. It it's easy for those reasons but it is a uh it's not easy to reef um and it doesn't have a spar i mean as the sprit but it doesn't have uh it's loose footed so it's not super it's not really that adjustable the way that uh, i like my standing lug sails with the spar i'm not going to put a spar on it like that it would just like ruin over complicate this thing and so, um, this build is all hardware store materials, uh, which brings me to some mistakes. Uh, one of the mistakes I made was that I made a point to use no fiberglass, nothing that I couldn't buy at the hardware store, uh, except for the ash hardwood gunnels, but you could get some kind of hardwood, probably comparable at a hardware store. Um, everything else... 100% of this is like Home Depot big box store. Which means that I made some like poor man's fiberglass out of canvas duck fabric and PL premium and that was a mistake. Um, it's already on my mind to go back and sand all the paint off the bottom of this and put real plywood or uh, and put real fiberglass on the bottom. The like I out here in the desert where it's 110 degrees when you go to the lake sometimes structural epoxy isn't the right choice for me epoxy melts but uh fiberglass and epoxy to coat wood to put a sheath on wood that's basically like the, to put a sheath of fiberglass on wood it seals all the water out. It's abrasion resistant. Um, I tried to do something similar with like a poor man's fiberglass on the uh, on the chines on this, and it was a mistake. So, other problems. There's a lot of curve in this stern. Um, I had these panels start to crack. I struggled to bring it in at the transom. Uh, all that was kind of sketchy and it all came together, but 
it, uh, it had me pretty worried for a little while. Um, I'm not ecstatic about my tiller. Well, it's there some problems. Uh, I had an issue. So another thing in the design on this, um, the, so I made the chine angle 30 degrees from front to back. So it's a single chine, like a Grand Bank story, but instead of bringing it in at the bow and the stern, because I'm doing transoms and because I wanted to develop all the parts, uh, I just did a 30 degree chine angle the whole way, which means, um, <clears throat> which means that I could just use trigonometry to develop these side panels, which was cool to be able to do it like an instant boat. But I did the math wrong at the bow. And so the, uh, I was going to do a deck at the top, but I ended up shaping, doing the math wrong. And so it's like a cave that goes angled down and forward is uh, like that. And, but now I like that. I like it more than if I would have done a deck. And I think it's structurally at least strong, probably stronger. Um, and so like developing two pieces at the bow did not go right. It was another problem in the build, but like turned out good. The the bow transom, I just traced it and cut it. And then the, uh, the cave um, that was supposed to be a deck just fit right. I, I might have trimmed it a little bit to get it in there, but um, but I'm happy with it. So the performance of this boat, I'd imagine it's exactly like how a Grand Bank story performs. Uh, I don't have any experience on rowboats. I'm out here. I've never sailed one, but I mean, the shape is the same. Which means uh, the high freeboard, so you can load it up with a lot of weight. Last night before last, I had my wife, her cousin, the dog, so three people, a dog, and uh, some snacks. So I had three people and a dog, so probably 650 pounds. And we rode it out. We didn't make it too far too fast, but um, it rode just fine. And just a touch of breeze came in, and we could move under sail, but we didn't make too much progress. And it was, we were tacking into it. Uh, so like a dory, you can load it up with a lot of weight. But when I'm on it by myself, it's just light and maneuverable. Like those dories are, uh, they're heavily built boats with the big planks and like the overhanging bow and stern. And this thing is light enough that I car top it myself, uh, which means that the rowing performance is a little bit easier. But that makes it also more tender. It's less stable. The... Uh, <clears throat> Um, I do two little tanks of, of water ballast if things get bad and there's room to stuff them under the seat, under the main thwart, but, um, they're not easy to fill up on this thing if things go bad. What else can I say about performance? So it's tender, it's tender, long slender shape points well, uh, like long... A long, slender, efficient shape is going to point well, but the uh, sail isn't super, you can't really tune the sail a ton, um, but it does make good progress to windward. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of, of centerboard. I didn't make, or daggerboard, I didn't make the daggerboard super long because I didn't want to lower that center of lateral resistance on that daggerboard, make it easier to capsize. So the daggerboard is a little bit longer and shorter, which makes it less uh, efficient, but it's the right choice for this boat. Um, what else can I say about performance? Sleeping on board was good last night. So this was a test of sleeping on board, um, at least in calm weather. I think that's enough yakking. Oh, the name. The name pot liquor comes from uh, it was like a slur my grandpa used. He grew up during the Great Depression, and I imagine it's like an insult to somebody who's like depraved, 
who wants to to lick the pot and do it the cheap way when they should uh and they're trying to get what's they're trying to get more than what they've earned a pot liquor so that name that like that name pot liquor thinking about like the de depravity of trying to get what you you might not have earned i think is just right for this boat because it imitates a dory but kind of cheats to get there uh it imitates like an instant boat like design but it kind of cheats to get there i built this with like all hardware store just like cheapest materials um so i think the pot liquor name is appropriate for it i think that's it